2015, The Martian, which involves no Martians. Um, great movie, absolutely minimal wokeness, minimal wokeness. You do have the woke aspect of it whereby you've got a white guy who's not allowed to have a happy relationship. But aside from that, it's a good movie. And um, after watching, re-watching Anola Holmes, which I must remember to delete from my hard drives, I hadn't realised just how woke it is. It's a shame. It's got a really good cast, really good actors. But it's just so woke. It's just so completely anti-straight white man that it was constantly offensive. So, um, yeah, The Martian. Okay, okay. This is the extended version. It's a lot slower. And um, I don't mind because I generally watch a movie once and then after that it's background. This was going to be a background movie. Well, it's a standard version. It's about an hour and 45 minutes. This has an extra 45 minutes of apparently him wandering around pushing buttons, looking depressed. The other thing I hadn't noticed before when I watched it, because I did, I do like the movie, is the retro. And just, I don't just mean the coffee machine and the little um, toaster oven underneath it. Obvious product placement. You sure as hell wouldn't get that today on a space shuttle, let alone in the future. And the uh, bag of computers in the background. You've got air pressure gauges. Why do they have an air pressure gauge as analog? They've also got all these canisters and speaker systems. I mean, the, the thing in the middle, like here, that's a speaker sprayed silver. And there's five of them for no apparent reason. Above it, you've got um, these lights. These are not LEDs. The movie isn't that old. It's 2015. And yet those are the old type of lights they get on um, like a computer or something or a console from 20 years ago. LEDs have been standard on technology for 15, 20 years. So they're using, I don't know if they're just trying to make it look more spacey or something, but a lot of it is very, very 1960s. They've got um, the, the cabinets, the way the, the way the cabinets open. They've actually got handles as opposed to something that would take up less space. Yeah, um, they've got like stick on labels for like food store one, food store two. You wouldn't have that as a stick on label, it would be written on it because you know a bit of ink takes up less space than a fucking sticky label. It's really, really strange, like metal cutlery and. Yeah, it's one of those films you don't want to look at it too hard. You want to just enjoy the acting. And the acting is quite good. Matt Damon is pretty good. Um, I only ever no I didn't notice him until I saw him in... Um, what was it? Dogma. That was it. I saw him in Dogma. And after that, it was Bourne movies. And that's pretty much all I know him from. And he's a great action star. And this movie shows he does have range as well, which is pretty good. One of the really, really insulting things about woking programs and movies is that you end up with people believing it is a reflection of real life. That, for example, I don't mind inspiring people to improve themselves, but this is not inspiration. It's blacking. It's blacking history. It's blacking the present. It's blacking the future. It's showing that the only intelligent people are black men. The only people who can save the day are black men. The only people in charge of NASA are black men. 
just did a quick search for the people in charge on the top. I just searched top people NASA. And every time, every time, there are no Caucasian people. Uh, sorry, there's no one else other than Caucasian and Asian. I mean, you get some Asian looking people, not many, but there are some. But um, there's no black people in the top tiers. It's not because it's not good enough. I'm sorry, it's not because it's a racist thing. It's because they're not good enough. It's that simple. When it comes to intellectual properties, thinking in a certain way, they just don't seem to be able to do it. So having stuff like this is not inspiring people to be scientists. It's making them think they don't have to try. They should be given it. Like Will Smith in his movies. Um, the Suicide Squad. Or a Suicide Squad, whatever you want, I can call it. He doesn't want his daughter to fail her education. So instead of saying, I want you to get her better tutors, he says, I want you to white man that thing. What, you just give her the qualifications without any education? Yep. Yeah, it's that kind of ongoing wokeness that fucking irritates me. I really enjoyed this movie the first time, but you see this guy on screen nearly as much time as you see Matt Damon. And he is a titular character in the movie. He's the main guy in the movie. But you're spending nearly as much time watching the black guy sit around being all intelligent and leadery than you are the Martian. I'm wondering if this is the extended version. Because I remember it being this woke the first time I watched it. I gotta see if I can try and find the original version. Because I'm pretty sure the extended version is just an extra 45 minutes of black people. Pretty much what they did to, um, oh, was that Zack Snyder fucking black version of something he did? Justice League or something. An extra hour of just black people and women. And the white people and the main people had no fucking say in the movie. That could be what this movie is. If it is, I'm going to have to try and get rid of it and find the original. I mean, I should be able to. I can find crap from 50 fucking years ago. I just downloaded a movie from 90 years ago, um, The Black Lagoon. That should be fun. Okay, the, because I enjoyed the movie the first time, it's like a Nola Holmes all over again. Because I enjoyed it the first time, I didn't consciously, I wasn't consciously aware of the wokeness. Um, the only music he has is black. That is the only music he has to play. It is a good movie, but you do have the ongoing work where they have to black it. There's a couple of um, tracks by white people, but 99.9% .9 of all the music is by black people. The main people who you see on earth are black people. It is just really, really insulting to all the pioneers of space flight, all the astronauts, all the scientists, all the people who put all their blood, gut and tears and lives into the astronaut program, but they don't exist. Because history has been blacked. I'll probably watch it again. I mean, I've now watched it, I think, two or three times. I think the extended version is just more black 70s music, more black time with black people running around. What is fairly insulting as well to black people is that they only find two of them. Out of the entire cast of people who actually had dialogue, at least a hundred people and they can only find two that are black and yet they're the ones who had the majority of the screen time after uh, Matt Damon. It's a good movie. 
And it's just a shame they have to make it political. But then it's American. All their movies are propaganda. So, Sean Bean, <clears throat> who pretty much always dies in movies and TV series. Bastard. Um, he's been sacked. Even though he's the one who made it possible to get him home. Because he's set this secret trans transmission. And so the last bit of the movie is a skinny white blonde who wasn't even in the movie, I don't think. And then the black guys, the two of them. How they now control NASA. They're now in charge. They now are responsible. And they, they are the bosses. And they are in charge of everything. And yeah. That's basically how the movie ends. Black wins. White gets sacked. Bastards. As Sean Bean will say. Yeah, the ending is shit. <laughs>